one of the biggest clash in cricket history, the India versus Pakistan match. At 9 June 2024, at the T20 World Cup, India won by 6 runs. What exciting bowling by Jasprit Bumrah and also Hardik Pandya. I am Mishudu Chandu and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And in this video, we are going to be building here on Cricket Score Predictor using Machine Learning. This video is also a part of multiples of 100 plus data science project series. So let's have a look at the demo first. Well, so this is the demo application for the Cricket Score Predictor built by using Python and Flux. And also you can see batting team is selected as India and bowling team is selected as Pakistan. So I'm going to be selecting here the England here as a batting team and the bowling team I'm going to be selecting as Australia. And also you notice one thing that how am I changing the country name in the drop down box also flag is changes. Let's say I'm going to be changing it as Bangladesh and you can see flag is also changes. So if you're selecting here again England, yeah, you can see a flag is also changing like that. And if I selecting here the city from here, uh, right now the T20 World Cup is uh, situated in the New York City, I mean the USA and the West Indies. So that's why this city is not available in this data set. So by default, let's select here the Chittagong. That's my city. Okay. Now current score, let's say 148, 148 and Uber down, let's say 18 Uber and wicket out, it's let's say five wicket and run score in the last four over, sorry, five over, it's nothing but let's say 48 because I collect this score from the click burst, okay? If I click at a predict score and you can see predicted score is nothing but 172. Well, if I check on here on the click burst and you can see here the value uh, that actually got it is 172 and where we got here 165. Quite close, quite close, okay? Because the Benu uh, is not actually uh, like that because we selected here Benu as a Chittagong and here the Benu is maybe the New York City. So that's why uh, the value of the prediction score is quite different. Okay. But if I wanted to check in this one, let's say for 18 over, we got here uh, 148 at the England team. And in the last five over, uh, if I'm going to check in this one, we got here 48 run without any wicket. I mean, without losting any wicket. 48. So peel salt in the in the side of the England. So in the Australia side, it has the bad communist, the Mitchell struck. Okay. So all of the cricketer actually have in the Australia side, just like the Glenn Maxwell, uh, just like the Undertaker, and also have the Travis hat. Okay. So that's the team in the in in the in in the, in the from the Australia, and in the England it having the Ben Stroke or the Josh Butler or just like the Johnny Beresford. Okay. So I'm also a great fan of the Australia and as well as the India, right? So now what I'm going to do, I am simply going to start in the tutorial right now. So bina kisi dar ke har har maha debal ke start karte tutorial. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Jupyter Notebook. You can using the Google Colab or PyCharm itself. And also you can see here in my working directory, I have one CSV file, t20i underscore info dot csv. And using this csv file, I mean comma separated below file, we are going to be building here our machine learning model. So you can get this csv file inside my GitHub directory. You can just grab it from here. And also you can see here one empty IPMD file cricket score predictor dot ipnb so i'm going to simply going to open in this one so well this is my empty ipnb file and that's my notebook so now what you can do i am simply going to load here the pandas and the lambda library so that i can load the data set from my working directory so let's say import uh, pandas as pd then i'm going to import in here the numpy as np so using pandas i can load the data set from my directory because this is also one CSV file so shift enter well so it's loaded the library in my Jupyter notebook. So now what I'm going to do, I am simply going to using here, let's say pd.read underscore csv because this is a csv file and inside is pandas, it having a library. So it have a function called read underscore csv. Now inside that, I can simply going to pass here my path. So let's say t20i underscore info dot csv. That's my file name. I'm going to put it here inside my read csv functions. So now let's make it inside a variable called dia. Okay, dia is equal to pd dot read underscore csv. Well, now what I'm gonna do, I'm simply going to checking this one, the data set. So let's say df dot head. So it will show me the four, four, zero to four, I mean five. Okay, five, five columns of the data set, sorry, five rows of the data set that you can see. So you can see we have the unmatched zero match id batting team bowling team ball runs player dismiss i mean out wicket city and also beno okay so let's try to check in this one is there any null below or not so let's sum 
okay then you can see uh, in the city sections we have some null value well and also you can see uh, if you want to see the shape of the data so let's say df dot shape uh, for checking the shape of the data and we see there uh, the shape is nothing but 60 up to 63k okay up to 63 thousands okay but here we can see here city is nothing but missing value is nothing but uh, more than 80 eight thousands okay that's mean uh, some of the below are missing in in the city sections so what i can do we need to handling this one but before that let's see what kind of feature that we needed in order to building this kind of cricket predict, predict, predict uh, score predictor so there are so much um actual website are available just like the creek bus okay let's like the creek bus okay creek uh creek bus then we have the cricket line guru cricket line guru and even though in the tv screen okay and in the tv screen okay so in this tv screen and also the cricket line guru website they actually showing some of you uh just like the projected score or predicted score just like that predicted score so how actually they're giving this kind of score just like the projected score and the predicted scores yeah they actually give it based on the machine learning algorithm based on the machine learning algorithm in the tv screen they maybe give it based on the current run rate or the player conditions and in the cricket line guru maybe they give their uh, their predictions based on the bowler based on the batting team or based on the previous score actually done so in this data set this data set is having the data uh, up to the uh, up to the 2021 uh, T20 World Cup right now. T20 24 World Cup. Uh, T20 World Cup is happening. So they actually collect the data up to that. This is the new data, which one is uh, right now. The Benu is right now in USA and the West Indies. Okay, fine. Now what I'm gonna do? I am simply going to uh, take a look at what kind of feature that you needed for building this kind of cricket score predictor. So first, you need the batting team. Okay, batting team that you already see in our uh application also then we need the bowling team okay bowling team then we need the city and which one is a missing value so to handle this out so you can handle it from the banu also because if you see that we have the banu's melbourne cricket ground that means city is melbourne so you can simply going to pass it inside the city i just you can simply replace it with the man value well then what you need then we need the current score current score uh, we can get it from the rounds okay current score current score fine then what you need we need the balls left i mean how many balls should be left let's say we have the uh 10 over okay that's when 10 over is left okay i mean 60 ball is gone and 60 ball is left yeah we're also checking the so on based on this we can get the predictions then what you get we have the wicket left wicket left yes wicket left is important let's say i have a 113 run with nine wicket so this is the last to kill and those are the bowlers so based on the bowlers so i need to also break them right so that's how wicket left is also important for the predictions then what in it we need also current run it run rate uh that actually using the tv screen i mean in the tv company actually using this one current run rate that's the current run rate is 12 and based on this run rate they actually give you all projected score or the predicted score well then after that we need the last five so last five you can also make it last six uh, just like the power play okay just like the power play okay uh power play just like this yeah but uh, last five yeah you can give it or last six you can also give it okay so i'm going to considering it as a last five you can also consider it as a last six also so let's give some comma uh so that we can make it markdown yeah here you go let's make it markdown and here you go fine so we need a batting team then we need the bowling team, then we need the city, then we need the current score, the ball left, wiki left, current run rate, I mean CRR, the last five. So we have the batting team, uh, also bowling team also, but having some problem in the city, having some problem in the city. So what I can do, uh, first we're gonna check in that, how can you actually extract this Melbourne? I mean, uh, this cricket stadium name, cricket city name from the cricket stadium. So what I'm gonna do, I'm simply going to take it from the city, so let's say city uh, here here is my city and from my city uh, from my city what i'm going to do uh, i'm going to check in that is there any null value okay uh, because you see in here data frame 
it having the none. So if the city is none, then we can simply going to replace it here. Okay. Then uh, we can get it from the data set. Get it from the whole data set. Whole data set just on the null value because it it also it, it also having some it's, it's 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 if you see the data set shape is nothing but 63 cap and it just having the eight eight thousand five hundred forty eight values right that's been more of the values are not missing so you need to also take care of them which one is null we need to take care of them I mean we need to checking this one now from that we're going to checking it based on the value okay value which value uh, in the which value the city is null Okay, then we simply going to make it zero, and you can see here we got here the first one called Melbourne Cricket Ground. If I make it one, again Melbourne Cricket Ground. I mean this one. Okay, so if I try to making one, let's say um, one hundred, and again Melbourne Cricket. Okay, let's make it five hundred. Yeah, it's out of range. Yeah, it's out of range. Okay, so out of range. Yeah. So what you can do is simply make it zero. Okay, for my I mean the first one, the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Fine. Now what I can do, we're simply going to split it. We can simply going to split it. Yeah. We can split it based on the space. Okay. Now it will split it. So we're simply going to take it the first one, the Melbourne. Right now, this is how we can extract in the uh, value from the banner. Well, right. Okay. Now what I can do, we're simply going to fill the null value with this banner uh, first item. So we're simply going to make it out. Let's say df of city. Yeah, df of city. Then we're simply going to uh, using here the fill now. You can simply using the method called fill now. Otherwise, you can also using this one uh, technique. So for the it also actually using the lambda functions and as well as the np dot here because you need to check in this one. Yeah, it is checking for in the whole data set. So you can using the fill now. So let's say fill now. Df of uh, we can passing here the banu. So let's say banu. Okay, banu, and we simply going to apply it here with the full data set. So let's apply lambda, lam, lam, uh, lambda, the anonymous function. So let's make it split it. So x dot split. Okay, x dot split. And simply, we simply could split it out and based on the current score. Fine. Now, what I can do, we simply going to pass it in the same data frame and with having a uh, the same column. So let's say df dot hat now. And this is our data set. Now you can see CT is converted into Melbourne. So if I wanted to check in this, the tail one. Yeah, here you go, tail one. Fine. Now let's try to make it, let's say df dot, uh, df dot shape. Yeah, shape is also okay. So is there any null below? Let's say is null dot sum. You can also check in this one, sum. Yeah, you can see here, there is no null below right now. Yeah, we got here our uh, city now we need to take care of the current score yeah so for that um, what I can do we can also uh, check it from this runs but before that but before that we need to also take care of one thing that see uh, in this data set in this data set um, if I try to check in this uh, banu okay if I try to check in this city okay just city uh, let's say df of city okay city dot bellow counts okay uh, bellows count okay bellows count just for this one uh, has no attribute bellows count okay bellow count uh, I think yeah bellow count sorry see uh, in some data set I mean in the sum uh, in some city, if I see, uh, the match is not playing well. I mean, let's say in each banu, let's say five match should be happening. Okay, five match should be happening. So, yeah, the, we can use in this one for the predictions. Just like the at least five match should be happening. Okay, but here, uh, what you can do, we can also take care of them. Just like uh, if we, uh, if we actually just taking the eligible country just like uh, eligible cities just like if it is a greater than 600 okay if the score of the uh, cities is greater than 600 so we, we can take in this one so it will be easy for the predictions because in some cities just like the dharmashala uh, then the karara is just having the ahmedabad is just having the lowest number of uh, matches should be happening here 
so what you can do you can simply going to remove this one and we can taking the best one which one is having the highest one just like in the colombo it uh, just like the four thousand up so we can um creating one uh creating one uh thing uh here we can actually checking this one yeah which one is the best one you can getting those one i mean taking take care of them so what you can do you can using here the city and from the city you simply using here the value counts okay value counts okay and now from the value counts we can checking it based on the city so let's say city so if the city dot value count below counts is greater than 600 i mean 600 so we can take it index dot to list to list okay to list just have a check just have a check let's say this is the eligible cities okay if i try to check in this one eligible city now those are the eligible city uh, which one having the more matches which one having the more matches okay just like uh, more matches they actually play it in this cricket count so that we can easily pick them because we don't know about the wicket we don't know about the wicket it have a less number of uh, play the uh, cricket play the yeah they know about the less number of predictions so that's why we're removing here the last number one and getting the best one so that's why we making this one now what i can do is simply going to put it inside my data frame so let's say df and inside my city okay inside my city so what i can do yeah we can remove this one yeah here you go so let's say df equal to df of uh df of city and inside that uh, is in dot is in and inside that what i can do we can passing here my eligible city so that's my eligible city okay cities that's it now that's my full data set uh thoda mistake over here but city city is not having uh df of city uh dot e scene and the eligible city oh i think i need to run it from the beginning okay let's run it from the beginning and see what happened oh, 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 oh my god oh my god you see okay fine that's right, so okay fine okay let's say df dot hat now yeah this is how the data set look like if i try to check in for the tail ah this is how the tail if i try to check in for the shape uh df dot shape and this is the house shape like so before it having shape uh just like up to 63k uh right now it have just having the 50k okay yeah now let's uh, we have the city right now so now let's let checking it for the current score for the current score here you go this one current score so now if we check in this data set uh just a white df dot head See, it's just having two numerical columns, two, three numerical columns, two numerical columns actually. Player dismissed, it also having the wicket name. If I try to check in this one, let's say uh, just df, uh, then you can see, yeah, d, m, d, silva. It's also nothing but one string types of data set. So let's say, got ahead. okay, df, okay, fine. See, uh, these are the two other numerical value. And also, you can also once see one thing, the match ID are the same for the each mass and it having each balls per ball per run per ball per run see for the first ball it have zero run first second ball is nothing but zero ball zero run and is a zero over and the ball number three one run ball number four we got the two runs now we need to for getting the current score for getting the current score we need to join all of them i mean add all of them just like right now after five ball the current score should be three the current SQL should be three. So how can we got it? Yeah, we can got it using the cumulative sum. Using the cumulative sum, which one is available inside the pandas. So let's see how can we do that. So but before then, we to group by this match ID because uh, the match ID should be in the group by uh, because we have the two, 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 two. All of the match ID are both are the same. So based on the match ID, we can do the cumulative sum. So let's try to do that. So let's say df dot group by, and we seem to going to group by uh, based on the match ID, okay, match ID, and getting the cumulative sum. So let's say q sum, yeah, q sum, 
now based on which one let's see if i using here this cumulative sum we have one ball and also we have in run now you can see for the first ball we got zero for the third ball we got zero okay for the sixth we got here okay it's the cumulative sum for the balls okay uh, for the first ball we got here zero for the second ball we got here zero for the third ball we got here one and the fourth ball we got here the three run and the fifth ball we got here the five if i see this one uh here you can see for the fifth ball we, we got the three run and you can see three run and now for the balls we don't need it we just need to take care of the runs okay we just need to take care of the runs uh -huh. okay now we can simply go into store it inside a variable called current run score okay so current run score i mean current score so current underscore score fine so now it's our current score is available inside the front um, columns okay so if you're kind of checking this one df dot head and you can see current score is out of three after five ball fine so our current score is also done now we need to take care of the which one uh take care of the balls left take care of the balls left and the wiki is left okay also so what i can do uh but before that we need to test starting here the how many balls is gone and how many uh, overs okay how many uh, balls is gone and how many overs so then we can actually check in there's balls left okay because you need to take in this from the overs and you can multiply with the six and you also have the seven i mean six this is the ball number how many ball are actually gone so you can first extract in here the over so over just starting here the over so this is our over you can take it from the ball okay uh, that's our ball and from the ball we're simply going to take in the first one called apply and you can use the lambda okay x into str of the x because this is a string data and i'm simply going to split it okay split it with the dot and taking the first one so the first one so this is why df by uber so if i shift enter and again df dot head okay then you can see uber is got it and now if i start thing here the same thing for the ball number so let's say ball number okay which ball is right now so we can make it ball and we're taking care of the one okay now if you're checking this one we can also got here the ball number i mean zero number zero over and ball number is the one okay now we can getting it for the ball how many ball is actually uh they actually passed i mean ball left so we can using here i mean how many ball is like bold here so that's a ball bold okay so we can join all of them and also uh, also what i can do we can multiply with the six for the over so let's say df of over we can simply multiply with the six now you got the ball i mean how many ball in over but before then it also convert them into the integer because this is a string type of data so in six and after that we can take it the also the ball i mean how many ball is actually done so it should be the balls uh, ball number number of ball and we can also make it a stipe equal to int okay fine now that's it okay 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 uh, plus 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 or oh, make it here one bracket and here you go okay we can if i try to check in this one again df dot head then you can see how many ball it's here so first ball second ball third ball fourth ball fifth ball if i try to checking for the tail uh, then you can see uh, it having uh, how many balls left just having current score and inside that you can see 121 ball so which one is not happening as usually which one is not happening as usually so what i can do uh, we can also uh handle in this one see uh shayat yaha par no ball ho chuka hai i mean no ball ho chuka hai is liye uh yaha par ball ka jo count hai na wo increase ho gaya okay literally the ball should be the 120 okay so it also handle in this one you have to handle in this one so what how can you handle so let's say how many balls left so let's first check this how many balls should be left so let's say ball uh, balls left 
so ball select and if i checking this one let's say from 120 uh minus df of uh, the ball bold okay i mean the balls bold so let's say ball bold okay now we can check in this one from the data just to wait uh, first checking for the tail because we don't have the data in the in the, in the first one so see uh, it write a minus one so minus one is not can be a ball left minus one is cannot be a ball left because the no ball so we can handle in this one so how can you handle this one so let's say df of ball uh, left okay so ball left or balls left uh, balls left so balls left so you can simply make it that's a df of uh, balls left and apply here lambda functions you can also using the if else conditions so if it is a nothing but the zero if it is nothing but zero so let's say x if it is nothing but a zero okay if the x is less than zero i mean if it's less than zero means minus so we can make it zero otherwise we can make it x simple okay if it is a less than zero then we simply make it zero otherwise just make the same thing i mean zero means zero two means two three means three so now let's check in this one df dot l yeah now if you see that the problem is solved fine the problem is solved right now okay we have the balls left also now we need to take care of the wicket left i mean how many wicket is left here um, yeah wicket left and also the current run rate so how can you actually get it from here so you can get it from the player dismissed you can get it from the player dismissed so let's take it from here player dismissed so let's say df uh, of player dismissed so let's say player uh, dismissed and you can simply go to apply here uh, the lambda function and if the lambda uh, if the lambda is nothing but x equal to 1 if x is not equal to x if x is not equal to uh, 0 otherwise you simply make it uh, 0 why see just one thing see on this data set you can see here dmd silver is got out okay bold or wicked so for this case you can see here zero that's mean this full data is nothing but one object if i try to check in this one uh just taking this one let's say df dot info uh, then you can see here the player dismiss is nothing but one object that's mean this is nothing but one string so if it is not equal to zero that's mean it having one string we simply make it x equal to one otherwise we make it zero otherwise we make it zero that's been one kind of numerical data we simply going to building out one kind of numerical data we simply going to building this out so what we can do uh, we can simply go into either in this one okay now it apply inside my data set now what we can do uh, we can uh, simply go into uh, or simply going to pass it inside the same variable so so that we can copy it yeah now you can see it's copied same thing so if i try to check in this one now df dot uh, okay just df and now you can see one dmd silver is converted into the one okay this is how you can actually handle in the wicket left sorry player dismiss now you need to check here uh, about the player dismiss i mean the wicket left so we can take it from the player dismiss but before then we have to convert this player dismiss into the integer so let's say s type should be the int because we're simply going to take it from the wicked left so that's going to convert them into the integer also so let's say player dismissed equal to we're simply going to group by um, group group by based on which one based on which one so we can take it from the each match id okay so we need to making it the match id okay because for the each match how many wicket is gone we can based in uh, we can get it based on the match id so simply doing the same thing uh come sum okay cumulative sum uh, based on the player dismiss based on the player dismiss this one based on the player dismiss we're simply going to do the uh, uh come sum i mean cumulative sum now if i try to check in this one uh the wicket left so if i try to check in this df 
and now you can see the come sum how many wicket left okay how many wicket left nine wicket nine wicket nine wicket okay after the match because match idea both are the same in each match you can see for the Sri Lanka versus Australia for the last over I mean should be novels nine wicket is gone this is how you can got it up now we can simply going to take it from wicket left so we get uh, left so we can make it from the 10 as is a 10 11 player so yeah when one is out so one is left i mean not out so 10 player is the play so you can make it let's say df uh, player dismiss so we can pass it out here yeah now if i try to check in this one we get left uh, df dot hat uh, you can see here how many wicket should be left here 10 wicket is left let's say df just only then you can see um, one wicket is left one two wicket is left yeah this is how we can checking this one wicket left so wicket left is also gone uh, if i go down up again not down um, wicket left is gone and now we need, to, we need to check here the current run rate okay so yeah we can get it here easily just a wide so let's say df of current run rate so let's say current run rate okay just to create a variable so you can take it from the current score so let's say current score and you can simply go into multiply with the six and divide with, with the number of balls i mean how many balls are gone so this is how we can get here the current on it okay number of board so let's make it in the bracket so that's our current run rate so this is how we can got here the current run rate uh yeah uh, uh, thoda mistake ho gaya hai yahapar. so we can you know this one now it's fine now so df of current run rate so we can check in this one df let's say dot tail and you can check in this current run rate 6.34 right after this uh, match okay 6.34 right after the match okay so this is the current run rate that you got now uh we need to check in here we need to, now we need to check in here the last five one i mean last five score uh, five or six okay so how can you get it out yeah we can get it out based on the group id so based on the match id so let's say df dot group by uh, group by and let's say match id now there's the problem see we just have in the five over five over left after the five over how many run or you can make it six just like the power play just like the power play okay so let's make it five now and your job is to do it for the six over also so five over mean how many ball five over mean basically 30 balls means 30 balls so what i can do first we're going to check in here the match id and this is our group that's our group now let's take in the match id also so match id equal to uh, df of match id match id i mean the unique match id Okay, that's our unique match ID. Unique match ID. Okay. Now for five over it having a three ball. Now we can using here one window, or we can say the rolling. And using this rolling, we can actually getting here the after the five after the five over how many rounds should be there? Okay, how many rounds should be there? So for that we can get here the sum of that. So but before that we need to actually take in here uh, I to all the bill from the loop. So let's say for ID uh, in match ID because match id have the unique id also so match id now based on the match id based on the match id i need to store it inside a list so let's say last uh five last five okay and yeah here you go then i simply going to extend it here now the question is why not append why not append append just put here single below append just put here the single below and using extend you can actually apply here i mean you can put here the multiples below okay extend so you can get it from the groups from the groups okay from the groups from the groups from the groups we can get the group okay get the group now based on the group we need to passing here the my id and we're simply going to rolling back 
So let's say rolling. So we need to give the window size. I mean, how many ball? So window size is nothing but the 30, me 30 ball. And after 30 ball, we're simply going to sum it out. And which one? We're simply going to sum it out our runs. Okay, our runs. And after that, uh, after that, after that, we're simply going to make it values uh, dot to list. That's it. Okay. Now this is our match ID. Now we need to paste it inside my last file. So let's say last five. I need to paste here my last five. Okay, there's my df. So df dot head. Yeah, that's my last five also here. See one thing in the last five, some of the values are nothing but nan. If I try to check in this one here uh last five see most of the value are nan but after 30 ball you can get here some values 43 44 45 44 that's when after right after the five okay i mean after the 30 balls we don't have any value that's why it is showing me the nan but we need to take care also them it also take care of them also so because let's say we have the three ball four ball five ball so we don't have any runs we don't have any runs because we got we give here the window size is nothing but 30. After 30, just like sliding into in NTKS, it will after sliding it will hit. It will hit. Then it will start at start at the counting. So the counting. Now uh, what you can do, we simply going to merge all of them. So based on the batch ID. So let's say df dot group by uh, group by and we simply going to group by based on the match ID based on the match ID and do one sum the cumulative sum and simply we simply going to take it uh, reset it based on the runs okay reset on the runs because we have some NAND below also this inside the last five so that's why so based on the runs we simply going to reset the index reset the index and you simply going to merge it inside my df on match ID okay on match ID match ID okay so that's my final df that's my final df okay so now if we're checking this one final df uh that's my final df run x and the run run y okay how many run actually available it's nothing but for the each balls runs and x is nothing but my total run so using this one you can get here the total number of runs i mean how many total runs are available because you also need it for the predictions so that's why actually using this runs and also we are also having some null value uh and the last uh five we need to also take care of them so that's why we simply first going to taking the sum of the all the rounds total match runs so that we can give here on predictions now uh, we can simply going to uh taking one list and where we can give here my all of my necessary uh value I mean, all of my necessary uh features which is required for building the machine learning models so we can add it inside let's say first that we have the batting team uh, batting team then we have in the bowling team but we can take it from here so let's say here uh, final df dot columns okay so batting team then we have the uh, bowling team so we can get it batting team then we have the bowling team then we have the city yeah here we go city then we have the current score the current score then we have the balls left so balls left and also the wicket left and also the current run rate and also the last five current run rate and also the last five balance so last five so we can make it here like that balls left Wicket left, car and run rate, last five, and also the run x. Okay, run x is nothing but my total run. Okay, so see in my full data set, you have the batting team, uh, then you have the bowling team, then fit, the current score, the ball left, the wickets left. Okay, then car and run rate, the last five, and the run x. Fine. Now we're simply going to, okay, run x is not in the index. Uh, run okay runs index runs runs 
okay fine now now we need to also removing this NAND value from the data set so you can simply going to drop it here so let's the final df dot drop now and we're simply going to make it in place equal to true so in place equal to true yeah fine that's our final df now yeah why actually do this one uh, uh this one nothing but for the uh, total sum of the of the runs total sum of the runs you can also be using here another technique for totaling the runs based on the match id so that's our full data set that's our full data set now what you can do we simply going to divide our data set into train test and split and after that uh, after that we can build in the machine learning model but before that also before that also we need to also check yet then is there in a null will or not again df dot is null dot sum dot sum yeah it don't have any nan value so what i can do uh, we can take in the samples of the each shape so if i try to check in this one uh, let's say df dot shape yeah this one the actual shape now but maybe there are some value which one uh, which one value is nothing but the nan so we can take in the samples of the each of the shape uh, each of the shape so we can take in the samples yeah otherwise you can also skip this one so let's say final df if you have the nan value so how can you take the samples so you can using the final uh, df dot shape and we can take in the first index first index this is how you can take in this one if they're in null below or not so let's say final df this one so let's say final df dot shape now the shape is look like okay fine both are the same you can also ignore this line also if you have the nan below you can uh, you can you, you can also handle in this out okay without using this one just like uh drop nan. okay so now what you can do is simply going to divide our data set into the train test and split but before then it also we need to also divide them into the dependent and the independent features let me x and y so let's mean, mean x equal to final df uh, dot drop so let's drop in here the columns so which column we're going to drop so let's say we're simply going to column drop see the run x column okay so we need to making it inside the list so run x and we're taking all of them inside my x and for the y we're simply going to take in the uh, runs x1 because we need to predict this one so let's say runs underscore x fine now from sk learn okay let's say from sk learn dot model selection selection we're going to import in here the train test and split okay okay it's imported now let's test it here train test and split and inside that we're simply going to passing him an x uh x capital x y and the test size is nothing but 0.2 and the random state let's make it 42 and this should be the x train and the x test let's x uh, train x test y train y test yeah we divide our data now so if i try to check in this ones x train this is how the x train look like cool now we need to import in here all the necessary library for building the machine learning model so let's import all of them okay so let's take some shell and now i'm going to importing it here so let's say from sklearn dot compose i'm going to importing here the column transformer why column transformer actually see uh for more why actually column transformer uh because if i see in our data set it having some categorical value just like the batting team bowling team and the city and some numerical value so we can from this whole data set we can using the column transformer so that we can using this column transformer so that we can do the feature extraction of the feature encoding in the, each of the data and just it's just not many mechanisms for doing it in a one single lines of code yeah so that's why we're simply going to be using the column transformer, interesting transformer, right? So let's say from sklearn 
dot p processing we're simply going to import here the one hot encoding okay one hot encoder not encoding encoder then from scale learn scale learn okay scale learn scale learn no, scale learn dot uh, pipeline so let's get on pipeline and import here the pipeline inside the pipeline we're simply going to passing here my uh, machine learning model the one hundred coding the column transform all of them we can pass it inside the pipeline and also let's from scale learn uh, dot pre-processing uh, processing we're importing here the standard scalar so let's import the standard scalar then from scale learn dot ensemble ensemble we're going to be putting here the random forest random forest regressor because this is a regression problem okay random for a regressor that we need to also installing here the exibost regressor which one is also powerful so from exibost exibost we're simply going to be putting here the XGB boost XGB regressor okay XGB regressor and also we simply going to import that's a from SQLAN dot matrix we're importing here the R2 score and also the mean absolute error okay mean absolute errors okay that's it so yeah it will loading all of the necessary library now we're simply going to creating one column transformers and inside this column transformer what you can do you can simply go into first taking the one hot encoding so let's taking it on so let's say first uh, one hot encoding let's make it uh, one hot okay yeah let's make it transformer okay transformer okay then we can take in the one hot encoding one hot encoder and inside this one hot encoder we're making the sparse sparse should be the false and also drop equal to first I'm just getting the instance of that and after that uh, we're simply going to take in the which one we're going to transfer batting team bowling team and the city and all of them the numerical columns so let's give it here uh, batting team that we have in the bowling team then we have the city right uh, city okay here you go then after that we're simply going to making here our reminder reminder equal to pass through remainder remainder equal to pass through so let's pass through yeah we actually do the same thing in another tutorial also so that's my column transformer let's making it trf or you can make it let's a transformer like that okay let's make it transformer so that it look good yeah that's what transformer is ready now it's simply going to pass it inside the pipeline so let's a pipe line and inside this pipeline in the steps we simply first passing here my step number one so in the step number one what I can do we can apply here the trans uh, former okay apply here the transformer then we apply here the standard scalar uh, here so a step number two is nothing but my standard scalar. So let's test standard, stand, stand, standard, standard scalar. Okay, standard scalars. Then in the step number three, we're simply going to apply here the machine learning model. So let's say step step number three, we're using here the machine learning model. So let's say using here the XZB regressor. 
uh, you can use in here the random for us also so let's give him the number of estimator matters okay estimators if you let's say uh, 1000 estimator and learning rate uh, learning rate let's give it here 0 0.2 we can also give it here 0 0.001 then let's say max depth max depth equal to let's say 12 app uh -huh. then giving him the random state uh, let's give it hit one okay that's our pipeline is ready that's our pipeline how it look like step number one it column transformer then have the transformer the reminder is pass through and the standard color and the xz boost classifier cool let's use the pipeline so let's a pipe dot fit uh yeah let's make it pipe okay and using here pipe dot fit now so pipe dot fit and inside that we can using the x train and the y train yeah that's our fit and for the predictions so that's the predictions so that's a pipe dot predict on our which data on our test data x test data yeah it's take time maybe one or two minutes otherwise 30 to 50 seconds okay now we can simply be printing the r2 score so for r2 score we can use it here the testing value so y test and the y prediction score and for the mean absolute error mean absolute error we can simply going to pass in here the same thing y test and the y predictions yeah so you can got have some prediction below now what you can do is simply going to importing here the pickle so that you can saving this pipe i mean my data i mean my model file so that i can use it in my web applications so let's say pickle dot dump and inside this dump yeah you can see here mean absolute error is not even 1.7 and r2 is right, right now 98 percent quite good quite good quite good so let's try to dump it here and let's say pipe and let's make it open you can also check in the accuracy score also if i am opening this one let's say accuracy score yeah we can using here the accuracy score also uh here is it and y test and the y predictions i don't think that accuracy score is needed uh, classification matrix okay mix of continuous target that's why accuracy score is not needed here because this is the regression problem mix of the problems so that's why and let's make it open and after that let's making it pipe but we are ready to remove in this one accuracy score because this is not a classification tax this is a regression tax so let's say pipe dot pickle okay in which mode let's say wp mode yeah, you can also using here the uh, job lip for the same thing so if i check in this one you have the pickle dot r dot pickle file okay so now we're simply going to use in this pickle pipe dot pickle file inside our web applications and try to building here our web applications using python and flux so let's try to do that well so now it's time to creating here the web applications using python and flux and also you can see here i open here a file called app.py and inside that i have the code for flux framework and also inside these sections you can see here it have extra two folder called it static and also one templates and inside this static folder i have one extra folder called images and inside that i have all the flag of the uh, country okay you can see uh, australia bangladesh england india new zealand all of the flag i have okay now what i'm going to do uh, i am simply going to running these applications with app.py okay so it will running and also you can see here inside this template folder i have an html file index.html file so we will understand this html file but before that and also checking the ui so let's checking it okay just to wait it is loading well it's loading so just click on here the follow link and that's our application how it look like cricket score predictor and having uh one two three four five six seven seven input box with having three drop down box and also one button called predicted score and some flag okay so now let's go on the html code um here you go this is html code let's close it right now 
okay so that's our HTML code so first we have a text called cricket score predictor this cricket score predictor then those are the images okay we just having one container inside this text container I have a row and a column and inside that we have the images of the batting team and the bowling team and you can see the batting team also okay okay so we will understand this one later on first understand the basics one I mean the drop down box and you can get this code in the video descriptions so cricket score predictor then we have an form and inside this form we can get here the method of the post method because we simply going to post the method here post the data from data on here so when i try to extract the data i mean fetch the data from the database you're using the get method and inside this have we have the from row and inside that we have the six using the md6 okay then what i can do we can using the setting the batting team I mean select the batting team if I see this one just to white we have a drop down box and inside it we have the uh, select the batting team so how can we select it we can select it from the uh, team so which one is coming from our ginger template so it having the you can see here select team okay select team I mean this one select team and inside this option you have the bell is called the select team and for the team uh, in in teams we simply going to iter to all the value from here and pass this uh, bell inside my team okay if the team is nothing but the India then we're simply going to make it selected I mean by default how you actually open these applications uh, the batting team, sh team should be selected as India and the bowling team should be selected as the Pakistan so that we don't get any error for the image sections okay and then we do the same thing we do the same thing for the bowling team also then we have one select city select city option then we have the current score this is nothing but one text box then we have the overdone this is also one text box then we get out and also run out and also one submit button okay one also one has submit button called the predict score okay now if i go inside this uh, drop down menu so we we need to get it from the city from the cities so this cities is coming from uh, our templates if i go inside this app.py then you can see here we simply go to pass it this data the teams and also the cities uh, by the constructions constructed in the, in the in the render templates so you can get it from the render template so how you actually get it this from teams this teams is nothing but coming from here coming from here and after that we can get it uh, all of the teams okay because we have the list of that inside my app UI then we can simply going to uh, show it inside our applications okay this is how the applications uh, HTML file look like okay then what you have we have uh, one uh, one uh, templates I mean one block which one is if, if we got the predictions then we can simply going to uh, see the prediction score so where, where you can pass this value from same random template called predictions okay and now this is for this is for nothing but the uh, css and the javascript code so when you're selecting here one uh, images okay one images for the flag then flag is also changes this is the code for the javascript code so i'm not going to actually discuss it here because our main theme is building here the cricket school prediction score cricket cricket school predictor applications so we don't need to care about this javascript code here yes you can get this code in the video description of the github link you can grab the code from here and just learn about it because i don't think that html is not so hard it's so hard okay because it's so easy to do it okay and now what I can do, I need to go inside my app UI. So now let's understand this code. Well, see, we import here first flux. From flux, we import the flux, then also the render template, then also requested. Then we import the pickle because we need to load in here our pickle file. I mean pipe.pickl file. Then we also import the pandas because we need to pass in the data just like the pandas data frame. Then we can do the predictions. Then we can using here uh, flux underscore underscore name and creating one application for that. Now we're simply going to load our pipe, I mean our pipeline, uh, in our cricket script predictor. If I open in this Jupyter notebook, then in, at the last we actually uh, save here our uh, pipeline. Our pipeline means inside this pipeline we have the one hundred encoding, our column transformer, the standard scalars, and also our machine learning model. Okay. If I see uh, this our uh, last of the code, and you can see we're saving this uh, pickle file in a, in a from the pickle. Okay. Then you have the teams. So those are the team we can got like, like Australia, India, Bangladesh, New Zealand, South Africa, England, West Indies, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and also Sri Lanka. Okay, those are the teams. Okay, those are the teams. So we select it, we select it from our data set. Then we have the cities. So how can you got the cities? Yes, we can got the cities from the our eligible cities. Okay, from our eligible city. Those are my eligible city. Okay, eligible city. So we got this eligible city from here and simply going to pass it inside our cities uh, list. Then after that, you're simply going to creating your own route. 
and we got here one uh, we actually give here one functions or you can say method called uh, index and if first time we making the prediction equal to none and after that if the request of method is nothing but the post i mean if i go inside this index.html then you can see here our from method is nothing but the post method so the method is post that means someone is trying to put the value from here so what i can do uh, we simply going to taking all the value just like the batting team value bowling team value based on their based on their name okay based on their name okay then also what i can do is simply going to uh, take in the city the current score the uber the wicket the last five see one thing in the uber we actually uh, you can also give in here just like uh, 18.5 like that you can also give it here so that's why we're taking it as a float float and wicket is nothing but it, it can really float integer the last five okay then you have the balls left and the wicket left okay and also the current run rate okay this is how you can actually get it here the balls left and the wicket left also then we're simply going to pass it inside my data frame the batting team the bowling team the current score the balls left the wicket left the current run rate and also last five we can simply going to pass it here okay then after that we're simply going to pass it inside my pipe dot predict okay then after that what i can do is simply going to get in the predictions then also we're simply going to pass pass the, our the teams and the cities and also the predictions so prediction is needed uh, for uh, predictions if i go inside this index.html and in the last section you can see here if the prediction is happening if the happening that is simply going to pass the prediction below from our app py and also we simply going to pass here our teams in a shorter manner so that we can use in this teams uh, list inside our drop down box and as well as the cities okay so this is how our application look like so now it's time to running this application again okay so let's run the application right now and um yeah it will teams is not defined team is not defined okay teams is not defined uh okay teams is not defined. why uh let's run it again now okay it's running i think i need to save it out yeah i'll save it again and now let's run it here and follow the link let's follow the link yeah that's our application if i select here let's say new zealand uh let's say bangladesh okay uh let's afghanistan south africa uh, sri lanka australia south africa sri lanka okay fine that's fine that's fine it's it's able to uh select you can select the team let's say india and the pakistan uh let's give it here one city so let's say bangalore let's say current score let's say 98 run uh, let's say five wicket and 18 over so let's say uh, 38 so let's click on pretty score oh god i got here the pretty score as a 119 so let's go on the click box and try to check this out okay if i go on here and try to search for india versus pakistan mass and go on commentary boom we got the same result as the as our output in our application we got 119 and same thing here 119 what a coincidence okay sometimes it should be the mismatch because of the Benu because right now the india versus pakistan match was happened at the new york city so that should be the barrier okay so that's it for today now and hope you enjoy this tutorial and make sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icons so i'll be back with the other tutorials so till then take care and bye bye